So today, I wanted to talk to you about how Jesus gives us nothing less than love. You know, I, I really believe that, you know, we see a lot of different sides of Jesus, right? We see the, the, the gracious side of Jesus. We see the firm side of Jesus. We see the confronting side of Jesus. We see the flipping table side of Jesus. I, I love getting to know all of Jesus, but I have to tell you, out of everything that Jesus does, it always comes from a place of love. And so with what he does, it's nothing less than love. And so us as, as, as just natural people, human beings, I feel like it's, it's so easy to focus on the feeling of love as the entire aspect of love. Do you, do you guys understand what that means? Where, you know, for example, okay, let's say, and, I'll, and I'm going to use this. Um, so let's say you, you fall down, right? Let's think back to childhood. So... You fall down, you scrape your knee, and you're just crying like a baby. And then your, your mom or your dad, they, they come to your rescue and like, oh, pobrecito. You know, they, they, they check your knee, they, they, they wipe it off, they, they hold you, they cuddle you. And, and in that moment, you just feel so much love, right? That this represents your feeling. You know, you just, I just feel so much love. Or let's say um, the moment... The first time you ever saw your spouse, dang, my goodness, I felt the love. I was just, uh, the, the breath was knocked out of me. I couldn't even think of a pickup line. That's how I knew she was the one, because she just messed with my head, right? Right? In that moment, I felt so much love. Or even, let's say, you know, there was, there was a time where you were just down, and you, you, you needed something, and your friend came along, they gave you a call, they brought you soup. They brought you something just to get your spirits up. And it was in that moment that you just felt so much love. And so we know that love is not a feeling, that love is an action. But it's, it, it goes to, it's, it's very easy just to, to associate the entirety of love with a feeling. And so the reason why I say this is because in the same way that it's easy for us to focus on the feeling of love, I think it's easy for us to focus on the knowledge about God's love versus experiencing his love, right? Because, see, nobody wants to get corrected, right? But if you don't correct your children, you don't love them, right? Your friends, your true friends are the ones who tell you what's wrong to your face, but they praise you behind your back, Right? So there's, there's this whole big dynamic to love. And what I, what I just enjoy about Jesus is that, you know, he's the type of person that will just, he'll tell us how it is and he'll correct us. And so let's say this is our relationship, right? And then, you know, we, we just, you know, we mess things up, you guys. We just add nonsense to just, to our lives. And then, you know, Jesus comes along. He shakes off the, the solution. And then he says, you know, it, it seems like you're adding some stuff to, to your life that you don't need to add. We got to get rid of that. You're a little hot-headed. And so he just takes you and you're like, oh, my God, what is this? Ah! And, and, and then, you know, he says, all right. You see, it wasn't that bad. And he said, what was that? That's called correction. And you say, okay, I'm never doing that again, right? And so Jesus he, he really, everything he does, you have to know the, the, from the get-go, everything he does, it comes from a place of love. And so let's define right now, what is love? So I'm going to bring up my first scripture. Everybody knows. So what is the most popular quoted verse for love, you guys? Anybody know? First Corinthians. See, I was on the stage, man. You guys cheated. <laughs> Okay, 1 Corinthians. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack up what love looks like. So it says, love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and love is thoughtful. Love is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not provoked nor overly sensitive and eagerly, easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth. 
when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things, regardless of what comes, believes all things, looking for the best in each one, hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. And next verse, is that it? That's it. All right. I thought there was more. I was ready for more, you guys. So this really, this, this is what love looks like, right? And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that there so that you guys can, can just visually keep that in your mind. And so there's a story in the book of John that, that I just, I recently saw in, in just a whole new light. You know, have you, have you ever read the Bible um, just from the perspective as if it was a love story written to you? If you haven't, I encourage you to do that. But so in the book of John, chapter 9, it's a story about how Jesus restores sight to a man that was born blind. It's a really simple story. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard of it um, or you've read it, but it's really simple. So I'm going to summarize it really quick, and then we're going to get into it. And so in this story, what happens is Jesus and his disciples, they're walking. They see a man. The disciples ask, you know, what's wrong with this guy? And Jesus says, oh, nothing's wrong with this guy. Let me heal him. He heals him, and then he tells him to go to the Pharisees to get examined. The Pharisees try to figure out what happened, how do you get healed. They deny that Jesus was the one who healed him. Um, then the guy came back. We're going to call him Bob. So blind Bob came back, and then he met Jesus for the first time as the son of God. And they began the relationship. And so that's the story in its simplicity. And so I want to get into a little bit of context. Before we do that, what I'm going to tell you is the way you can see how Jesus gives us nothing less than love is you have to recognize there's four things that Jesus does in this story. And I'm going to give you those points. Are you guys note takers today? All right. Let me see those notebooks, those cell phones. All right, I love it. If you're not a note taker, you can become one today. As pastor says, it's free 99. Just grab a pen and some paper. So the first way that Jesus shows us that he gives us nothing less than love is, number one, Jesus reframes our thoughts. Jesus is the type of guy who... Like, like I mentioned earlier, he doesn't let us settle with who we are. If we're off, he's going to help us understand the reality of things. And so, let's see. Okay, we're going to start off with verse 1. So, John chapter 9, verse 1, it says, As he passed by, so this is Jesus, as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents, that he would be born blind. Jesus answered, it was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. And so I'm going to stop there. Like I said, Jesus reframes our, our mind, right? So him and his disciples were, were walking, like I said, and they asked this ridiculous question. And it, it does make sense, but you got to think about this. Like, their perspective on this individual is just so judgmental, right? They see this guy, and it, I have to be honest. Okay, I'll tell you. I'm going to wrap myself out. I was really, I was, I was shocked that this happened. Um, I'm not going to tell you where it was because I'm sure you can figure out, you know, more details and possibly figure out who it was, even though you probably can't. But anyways, so I was going to a place um, and there was a guy that was in front of me. And I don't know why. I just I looked at him and then I was like, man, this guy does not look good. Like he was just he was raggedy the way he was talking to his kid. I was just like man, like, you're, you're not even connecting with your, with your son right now. And I, I just, I just, like, bagged on him for a minute. And then I caught myself, I was like, what am I doing? Right? Have any of you ever just looked down on someone? You didn't even mean to, but it's just like, you feel like, dang, I'm glad I'm not that person. Right? It's natural. But Jesus catches this. It's a red flag. And he says, this, this is basically his response. He says, God doesn't need you to to try and judge a situation to figure out how life works. 
That's not what God called you to do. God needs you to do the works that he called us to do. That's your purpose right now. And so Jesus even takes this because he doesn't just want to correct us and leave it at that. He takes this as an example. And he says, I'm going to teach you something, right? This, this blind guy here, nobody cares about him. He's, he's a social outcast maybe. He's, he's like dirt underneath everybody's shoes. Nobody cares about him. And so I'm going to take this guy right here and I'm going to give him all of my love. I'm going to heal him from blindness. And then you are going to know that God's love is not prejudice, is not bias, that it has no limit. And, and as a matter of fact, once I heal him from his blindness, that's what I'm going to expect from you to do from this moment on to the rest of your life. And so Jesus reframes their mind in that moment. And it's harsh. You know, you feel like, dang, you know, I shouldn't have said that. But... I, I love that Jesus does that. And so what I, what I love about God, too, for us is that God doesn't look for just the goody two-shoes. You know, God doesn't just look for, for those who appear good. And, and I bet you if, you, guys, if you guys were to take a look at your week, starting from today until tomorrow, and just analyze, why do you do the things you do? You know, why do you prefer to be around certain people's company over other people's company, right? Um, okay, I'm not going to get into that. We're going to continue on. This is good. It's going to get good. So, okay, so what Jesus taught them in this moment is that God has, he's created a plan, right? He, he has a work that he wants us to do. And when we add to that or take away from that, we literally destroy everything. And that's not what we want to do. So what I love about this next point is, number two, Jesus understands our predicament. So Jesus knows that it's not our fault. And the disciples did kind of size up the situation almost right. You know, in the book of Exodus, it talks about how God would carry the sins of their parents onto the children, but for those that loved him, it would go on for generations and generations. But Jesus was trying to say, that's not what we're focusing on. So he understands sometimes in our lives, things are set up as a disadvantage, you know, and he doesn't look at that. He doesn't say, because you have this, it disqualifies you. He says that I'm going to work with this, this disadvantage that you have. I'm going to work with this predicament. And so Jesus takes this this simple kind of a act for teaching his disciples, and he turns it into this big, grand idea. And so I wanted, I wanted to take us back a little bit. So when you read the Bible, it seems like every time Jesus talks about the Pharisees or the religious leaders, they're either a, a nuisance, an annoyance. They, they just do everything to disrupt Jesus' life. And what's, what's so amazing about Jesus is that he loves God's people. He came to earth with a mission, right? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, that's good. So you guys know, so Jesus, he's, he's on a mission here on earth, and he refuses to fail. He refuses to let People's lives, our lives, go on without experiencing the love of God. He wants to connect with us. He longs to connect with us. And the same goes to the Pharisees. And those were originally God's people. They were the, the Jewish people. They were the ones that were in uh, with, with, with Moses. They crossed the Red Sea. And so Jesus knows who these people are. And so he has a heart for them. And you have to understand that, that he has this heart for him. And so he takes this little moment and he turns it into something bigger where he says, I understand their predicament. I get that they don't like me, right? How, how many of you are not liked by someone that you know, right? So he gets that. I saw a smile. Somebody was like, yeah. So I get that they don't like me, so they're not going to receive from me. I'm not even going to try. I'm not even going to bother. Jesus says, I'm going to take this guy here, and he's going to testify that God healed him. And if they can acknowledge that God healed them, they're going to know that I'm really God's son. And so 
he tells, he tells his blind Bartimaeus, he says, you know, go and, and wash yourself in this pool. He does it. Jesus actually leaves. He doesn't even want to figure out what happens. And so he comes back. So blind Bartimaeus, he wipes off his eyes, and then he sees everything. And he creates, Jesus created a whole uproar. Everybody's like, is that, is that, a, is that Bob? Blind Bob right there? They're like, wait, wait a minute. That's not Bob. No, that's not Bob. This is a lookalike. This is a doppelganger right there. And then he's like, no, it's me. I'm, 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 the, I'm the guy who was blind. And then they're like, wait, but how, how, did, how did you get your sight back? And then he says, well, there was this guy named Jesus, and he healed me. And they're like, well, where is this Jesus? He's like, well, I don't know. And they're like, no, that's not Bob. Quit playing, Bob. And then so what ends up happening it's like a it's like a town emergency they gather everybody they take them to the pharisees because they said if anybody can decide how this guy was healed it has to be the religious leaders they have to be the ones to tell us was this god or is this a phony and so they take him there and the pharisees they look at bob and they can't figure it out they have to ask him how did you get healed and they said that word that no pharisee wants to hear it was jesus and said, no, it wasn't. You know what? This, it wasn't Jesus. Get your parents in here. They, they brought his parents in there. You know, isn't that sad? A grown man, they had to bring his parents in. And just to, just to help establish if it was Jesus or not. And, and they said, it wasn't Jesus. They ended up kicking him out. And they, they refused to believe that it was Jesus. So, okay, so this, the, the, the next step that Jesus does, the next thing that Jesus does to show us that he, he gives us love is number three, Jesus orchestrates our interruptions, right? And there's a difference between an interruption and a distraction, right? Satan tries to distract us. He tries to keep us away from what God wants us to do, but Jesus allows certain interruptions to come into our lives. And so what Jesus was trying to do in this moment is really begin to teach his, you know, God's people that there's something new about God's love, right? Like I said, his love is unbiased. It's unprejudiced. It has no limit. It doesn't see colors. It will reach anybody and, and everybody. And so it, it got to the point where Bob, he, he began to teach the Pharisees. He said, okay, so you guys don't know who healed me. Isn't that something, right? You say that it was just a fluke, but we know that nothing like this has happened in the history of all mankind. So take a moment, right? Sometimes I think we just, we're just so unsensitized to Jesus' miracles, right? We have to take in the fact that he really opened up the eyes of somebody. And he says, this has never happened in the history of all mankind. And we know that God only listens to people that love him and obey him. Right? And so, obviously, God worked through this man. If you can't see that, then you guys are just off. Completely off. And, see, this is one of, the, one of these things that we have to come and look at ourselves and, and say, if, if you say that, if you choose, okay, no, if you pick and choose what God says that he wants you to do, you, you're, you're, you're so far off, you're, you're, you're really, you're saying that, God, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to follow everything about you. I'm going to decide that, that you're this way, that you're that way. You're really going to become like a Pharisee. You're going to become like these, um, these men that were opposing Jesus. So let me, let me go back to, to this. Okay. So this is, this is the part where, um, this is the part where something amazing happens, right? So basically the Pharisees, they screw everything up because they can't bear the initial pain of this love that will free them from all their mistakes, right? They refuse to be taught. They refuse to say that Jesus is, is right, 
And, and I think that, you know, sometimes we can get to that place where we, we say, you know what, I can't, I can't agree with you, Jesus. You know, I can't say that you're right, that, that if this is true, everything about me is just is messed up. You know, everything about me is off. Everything about me is wrong. You know, when, when you reject Jesus' correction, you forfeit his grace, right? And so I want to I wanna take a moment and, and talk to you about this. So in order to experience the fullness of God's love, we can't be offended by the process in which God gives it. Right? Does that make sense? So why did, why did blind Bob get healed? Anybody know? Why do you think blind Bob got healed? Because he believed, but because he didn't get offended. Right? You can't get mad at God's process. I guarantee you. So if all of us are blind and Jesus comes up to you and he says, I'm going to heal you. And he creates a mud loogie. Right? And smears it all over your face. Every single one of you guys are going to flinch, right? You're, you're going to say, wait a minute, Jesus, is it, isn't there another way? Like, do we have to? Can't we, can't we just pray and fast? And Jesus is like, no, this is the way it's going to be, right? Blind Bob got healed because he didn't get offended at the process. And sometimes Jesus tells us to do this or to do that, and we'll say no. But blind Bob... You know, he was different where he said, you know what? What do I have to lose? Let's see where this goes. I'm going to try something just a little bit different. And he does. And you know, he gets healed. But with the Pharisees, they, they don't. It's, it's, it's like, have you ever felt that place where you're just so ashamed of who you are? You know, and, and you, you can't bear to have anybody look at you. And so they're saying, this isn't from Jesus, because if this, if this is from Jesus, then I have to admit that I was wrong about everything. I have to admit that, that I screwed up, that I'm so jacked up, and, you know, just don't look at me. But Jesus tells them, you know, I love you. I love you so much. And it, you get to the point where you keep saying no because you don't want to take this process that God has for you. Why does Jesus love the Pharisees so much? He loves them because he sees the potential that they have. He sees that they can do so much for God. They're God's original people. They could literally change the world. He's the type of of person that believes the best, that hopes the best, that sees what they can do, and that's the motivation behind why Jesus continuously goes, goes after the Pharisees and tries to love them. He sees their potential. Number four, this is the last one, and this is something that I personally love. Jesus stays in the present. He doesn't hold the past against us. He doesn't look into the future and say, you know, this is what you're going to do. I'm not even going to try Jesus works in the present. And so what was supposed to happen when blind Bob went to the Pharisees, they were supposed to see that God was real and that God healed them and that God moved through Jesus. What after that, all of the Pharisees could have said, you know what, Jesus, you're right. And they could have altered and shifted everything about them to begin to have a relationship with Jesus. But what happened was they didn't. And I think about how Jesus is in this moment. He, he comes back. He realizes everything that happens. And he comes back brokenhearted, disappointed. And now he has to fix everything. Um, I'll share a story with you about my son, Nathan. Um, and so there was a time where it was just, it was really hard to get him just to obey and just to listen. 
Um, we tried so many things. Um, I, I love sharing this story for our baby dedication class because um, I just it gives a, another perspective outside of spankings. You know, not that spankings are bad, but it just gives a, a, a well-rounded perspective. And so with Nathan, he got to the point where he would just, he would be so upset. He would tell me, um, he, would, he would argue, he would um, just completely flat out not listen to us. And so I decided that I was going to try and, and just understand him as a kid, as a boy. Um, and so one day, you know, something came up and he, he just lost it with me. The five-year-old kid, you know, lost it. They can lose it. Um, and so I, I remember I told myself, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to hear him out and I'm just going to listen. Um, I'm just going to hear what he has to say. And he, he told me that he, it's like, I'm so angry at you. Um, this is stupid. He's like, you're a, you're a dumb dad. You're just, this is all of these things. But mind you, so normally as parents, right, you're just like, you're like, okay, whatever. This is just a little kid. But when you're in that place where you love your child and you just want to take it all in so that you can understand him, man, that stuff stinked. Like he told me, I'm a dumb dad. I hate you. And I just, I just, I was, I was on my knees and I was just listening to him and I said, okay, okay. And it got to the point where I just broke. Like I, I lit, and then I might get to your eyes because it happens sometimes. Um, anyways, um, so I, I, I looked at him and I had to tell him, it's like, you know what? I have to, I have to take a step away from you right now because you're making me feel like I'm a horrible father, but I'm not. Um, I know that I just love you. And literally with, with tears down my eyes, I said, I need to, I just need to take a moment. And then it, it broke with him. He just, he's like, I'm so sorry. I love you. And then we're both crying. And it's, it's just, we had this moment where, you know, we, we both realized that we loved each other. We both realized that we were just off. Um, and that, I'll tell you, anger has never worked as well as that moment. Mind you, about 20 minutes later, he had a moment again um, because it's just, it's a challenge with kids. But I, you know, I, I feel like sometimes with, with us and with Jesus, he, he looks at us and he says, what did I do wrong? You know, for, for us to, to not want to follow him completely. You know, to the Pharisees. What did I do wrong? Because, man, he didn't do anything but love. Yeah, it was not the way that he, they wanted it to look like, you know, but we're talking miracles, signs, wonders. We have to get to that place where we can see Jesus that, you know, he's the, he's the creator of earth. You know, he can, I mean, he could spank us good. You guys, I don't want to know what a heaven paddle looks like, but I know it would hurt. But, you know, you, you see this man who could do a lot of correction, and he turns it around and makes it an opportunity to teach us again. You know, he's that type of guy that although, you know, you basically spit in his face, he says, I'm going to love you. I'm going to be patient. You know, I'm going to believe the best for you. And I love that. I love that about Jesus. So this last verse um, in John chapter 9, 39, it says, And Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, so that those who do not see may see, and that those who, may, those who see may become blind. Those of the Pharisees who were with him heard these things and said to him, we are not blind too, are we? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But since you say we see, your sin remains. So, you know, Jesus ends this with another opportunity. He said that, you know, you guys say that you know God, you get him. And that I'm not him. 
I came into this world not to judge so much your your shortcomings and and your and your behavior, but more so your your predicament that created those things. I'm more interested in in the why, and so I came here to see who really can't see, who really is unable to know who I am, so that they can see. And for all of you who do see, I'm gonna blind you if you don't change your heart. And it's not talking to you guys, but the Pharisees, you know. But I think that we can take this as well for us. Um, I think that, you know, so, so I said that he ends it with another chance, right? Jesus said, um, he said that uh, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But since you say we see, your sin remains. All they really had to say was, you know, we were, we were more blind than, um, than Bob. You know, Jesus, dang, I'm sorry. I was just off. But again, they didn't. They left it at that. And, and I feel like, you know, God's love is so firm sometimes because he believes so much in us. You know, and, and this is the truth. I, I mean, I know there's grace, but sometimes me, myself, I screw up so much. You know, and I, I, I screw up God's plan to reach other people sometimes. And I'm sure that you guys, you know, you know where, where, where all of us, we, we choose to sit in this Christian comfortability instead of trying something new, trying something dif- different, risking it all. I'm going to close with this. So bringing it back to Bob, I think, you know, obviously the, the love is what I explained, but the coolest part of this miracle is, is how Jesus came back and he showed him who he was. He says, you know, if you, if you go back to the beginning, as soon as he put on the mud, his, uh, right before that, I imagine Jesus would say something like, he's like, hey, um, I'm Jesus. Do you know that God loves you? Right? And I'm sure that Bob said, oh, yeah, you know, I've heard about that before. Um, and Jesus says, he's like, no, you don't, you don't understand. You know, let me do this. He puts the mud on and he says, go wash your eyes and you'll see what I'm talking about, about God's love. And then he goes, he comes back. Jesus is gone. I can just imagine he opens his eyes. Oh, my God. I can see. You know? And I, I don't want you guys to get caught up on that specific miracle. But God's love can transform your life. God's love for you can change everything in such an amazing way. But you have to be willing to love him. You can't get stuck on these barriers or whatever's trying to distract you. But you have to look at the interruptions in your life and say, God, are you trying to speak to me? You see, the miracle is just the introduction of Jesus. He's like, hey, I'm Jesus. Here's a miracle. First impression, amazing, you know? That's just to get your attention. The, 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 the matter of the, of the fact is that he just wants to have a relationship with you. And so he gets our attention and he says, this is what I can do for you. Jesus wants so much to connect us to God's love. You know, and so today I want to I wanna encourage you and empower you and tell you, don't let anything get in that way. And don't be the one that's stopping God from reaching someone else. Everything that God gives us, everything, every way that God corrects us, it's because he loves us and because he is adamant about making sure everybody experiences his love. Not knows about it, but experiences it.